Hello there, I'm Keo Ronan Beatmaker, and welcome to Lounge Ronin. All things, everything. And before we get into it, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And on this episode, we're going to discuss... Who were the Amalek people? And without further ado, let us get into it. Now this article was updated February 22nd. 2024 by Cecilia Bogard Who were the biblical Amalek people? If you've been following the news, you will have heard references to the news to the use of the term Amalek, which was cited by South Africa at the International Court of Justice and Hugue in January 2024. But what does this term mean and why does, it why does its use in public discourse trigger alarm bells? Amalek within biblical scripture. Within the Bible, Amalek is described as an ancient tribe of the Southern Levant. While no archeological evidence has been definitely attributed to their existence, the Amalek appear in several biblical stories and have come to represent the archetypical enemy of the Israelites. Amalek is first mentioned in the Bible in Genesis 36, 12. Described as being the chief of the Amalek, he is listed as a grandson of Asu, the brother of Jacob, through his son Eliphaz and his concubine Timnah. Here we have the painting of the biblical tale of Joshua's fight against the Amalek. By Powell's Castells. Depicted as a nomadic tribe, the Amalekites are chronicled in the Exodus narrative as assailants who ambushed the Israelites at Rephidim on route to the fabled Promised Land. Led by Moses, the monumental journey, which is a seminal event and a central narrative in both Jewish and Christian traditions, sought the divine inheritance and pledged to their ancestors. According to the biblical tale described in Exodus, Moses instructed Joshua to lead the Israelites in battle while he ascended a nearby hill with Aaron and Hur. Legend has it that Moses helped the staff of God and, as long as he held up his hands, the Israelites prevailed. When weary, Aaron and Hur supported him until sunset, securing victory for the Israelites. In later biblical narratives, the enduring animosity between the Amalekites and the Israelites is vividly portrayed. Amalekites are depicted as a persistent, persistent threat, launching attacks and raids on their territory. In one story, their raid of Ziglag prompted David and his men to pursue and defeat them. Here we have a 19th uh, century 
depiction of the biblical tale of Moses holding the staff of God as the Israelites defeat Amalek. Victory, O Lord, by John Everett Melalius. Within the book of Samuel, God commanded King Saul to enact a campaign against the Amalek. In retaliation, King Saul is instructed by God to completely annihilate all the Amalek Amalekites, including children, babies, animals, men, women, everyone explained Professor Atali Omer in the ABC interview. Contrary to these instructions, the story claims Saul spared King Agag and some of his best livestock, for which he was rebuked and lost his kingship. This biblical story is usually told during Shabbat, preceding the Jewish holiday of Purim which commemorates the Jewish people's salvation from Haman's plot to exterminate the Jews. Within the book of Esther, Haman, who descended from Amalekite King Agag, is identified as an official of the Persian Empire during the reign of King Xerxes, Xerxes I. The inheritance is clear. Saul's failure to fulfill God's instructions led to continued danger for the Jews. Here we have a 19th century painting of the biblical tale of Esther denouncing Haman by Ernest Norman. The story of Esther denouncing Haman is a pivotal moment commemorated during the Jewish festival of Purim. The, wep the weaponization of biblical uh, literary, uh, literary, literary <laughs> the biblical weaponization of biblical literalism and Amalek in modern day discourse. In the Madras, a form of rabbinic interruptive Jewish literature eludicating the Hebrew Bible for spiritual understanding, certain interpretation suggests that the Amalekites used witchcraft magic or occult powers, which were practices explicitly prohibited in the Torah and disproved of in Christian teachings. These portrayals underscore the spiritual battle between the forces of good and evil, the Amalekites standing in opposition to God. While the Amalek have come to represent the quintessential adversary of the Jews, Rabbi Jill Jacobs explained that these references are usually interpreted metaphorically as a call to stamp out evil inclinations within. Nevertheless, religious extremists have associated Amalek with modern-day foes, including the Nazis and ISIS. These days, among certain groups, the term has even come to encompass the Palestinians, Although such interpretations are highly contentious. Oh, wow, this is getting kinky. None of this is new. In an article entitled Genocide, a Commandment of the Torah, Rabbi Israel uh, has used the story of Amalek to justify wiping out Palestinians. Meanwhile, in 1994, an extremist murdered 28 Muslims praying at a mosque in the West Bank of Purim. According to Mother Jones, his grace has become a pilgrimage site for the Israeli far right. So, to the recent references to the controversial terms cited by South Africa at the International Court of Justice in the Hugue, apologies, 
Uh, so to the recent references to the controversial term cited by the South Africa at the International Court of Justice in the Hugue in January 2024, specifically, Amalek was mentioned in their case concerning the application of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Crime of Genocide in Gaza. The term Amalek was used by Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, in a speech deliverance after the Hamas-led attack on Israel in October 2023. Quote, quote, You must remember what Amalek has done to you, says our Holy Bible. End quote. Stated Netanyahu in his televised statement, quote, And we do remember, and we are fighting. End quote. Though Israel rejected the South Africa's claims that the use of the term Amalek was a call to genocide, reactions to its use in modern-day discourse highlight the need to exercise caution when invoking historic and biblical terminology. This care is necessary to avoid any incitement to violence and further escalation of historic tensions. Words matter and the calculated weaponization of history and biblical narratives for a political purpose is a dangerous game. In fact, the Center for Constitutional Rights criticized the use of this language, arguing that the Amalek commandment is a tantamount to divinely mandated genocide. This explanation why its use by Netanyahu and other Israeli officials has sparked widespread, widespread concern worldwide. And now we know who were the Amalek people. I know that this brief little presentation may draw some controversial eyes and opinions. But these are the words spoken by written by, I should say, Cecilia Bogard, and not of Ronin Art and Music. But we have to acknowledge the fact, and these are my personal perspective and opinions, uh, that she is correct, that words are important, especially when it comes to propaganda, no matter what country you're from, propaganda is prevalent. And we know that the United States has mastered propaganda perfectly. And we know that the current situation in the Middle East relatively has nothing to do with the United States. Unfortunately, uh, many of our taxes are going to the aiding and the destruction of an entire uh, group of people Uh, I'm not here to tell you whose side is right or wrong but I think we can all agree that genocide is wrong and I think we can all agree that what has been transpiring uh, in Gaza in Palestine is uh, is genocide and we know the danger of labeling people certain words Uh, I don't have to remind people of what transpired in the 1940s. I don't have to remind you what transpired in the 90s in Rwanda. I don't have to remind you of what transpired in Armenia. Something that could get you in trouble if you talk about it anywhere in Turkey or with anybody from Turkey. So... We know that words and propaganda 
and ideologies can lead to a domestication and a belief system that leads to violence. And as I've been learning more and more about, you know, the origins of the Bible and many of its stories, you begin to realize that uh, propaganda was even used to create entire religions and sects. So to everyone out there, I highly recommend that you are very mindful and aware of your words, mindful and aware of the origins of your actions and feelings. For they can lead you down a very dark, corrupted, and violent path. And we see that now, uh, more now prevalent than ever. Uh, whether it's with... Uh, in the United States was the rise and funding of these far left uh, groups and organizations, many of which we know are being funded by George Soros, which is a bit ironic considering that he is of a Jew, supposedly. But we have to understand that uh, the corruption of religion and the corruption of uh, politics goes hand in hand. Uh, many of our own modern day politics and politicians are run and operated by religious organizations and belief systems. Whether or not those are the true belief systems, I'm not here to comment on that. But I, all I know is that there is some dark forces at hand. And such dark forces are able to manipulate and lie about past religions, ancient religions and practices and symbols. When you look into the origins of the swastika, you realize that the powers to be corrupted a very peaceful in, uh, symbol and turned it into something dark and evil and cruel. And why is that? A symbol that predates Germany and Hitler, a symbol that is found in in North America and in, in, in Hindu culture. So, you know, I, the reason why I bring that up as an example is because it's something that we need to keep in mind. Um, that many of these belief systems and symbols and stuff like that have been corrupted by by individuals and organizations and sects that never believed in them to begin with. But I'm not here to tell you how to believe and how to think or, or what side you need to be on. I know what side of history I'm on. And I can breathe a sigh of relief knowing that I'm on the right side of history. Because I am educating myself on the true history. Something I wish for and advocate for everybody. And I know that it can be overwhelming, but, you know, just baby steps. Take your time. There's no rush. I know oftentimes we like to rush into things because we feel that it's ideal. We don't like to take time and digest information wholeheartedly. We like to put our own bias and perspectives on it to make it easier for us to swallow and that's unnecessary. Um, sometimes you just need to just take it on the chin. Sometimes you just need to take that hit. And I know it's gonna, you know, it's like a, a you know, a 30 year old, 50 year old brandy or scotch, but I know that sting is gonna hurt in the gut, but there is clarity afterwards. And I, I think that is something that we all really need to advocate for and seek is that clarity after the burn of truth. Because after we, you know, rise from those, uh, the ashes of the truth, that, of the essential reality that we find ourselves in, we don't have to be addicted to the...
Sorry, everybody. I, I got to go to work soon. <laughs> but we don't need to be addicted to the false reality, to the domestication. We are all individuals and we all have the capability to think and believe in and for ourselves. And that is the most important thing. I know religions can be complicated. I know religions can be scary and violent. But I try to remind you all that that was not its purpose. And like many things, there were operatives, saboteurs. But the further you look into the origins of many of our modern religions, the more you realize it's all the same the more you realize there are so many lies to be uncovered, so many lies to exploit and reveal the truth. So I, I advocate for you all to see with eyes unclouded by hate. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Lounge Ronin. All things, everything. If you've made it this far, please make sure to subscribe. Hit that like button and ring that notification bell. And until next time, stay positive, stay focused, stay true, and much, much love.